This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. All right, we began writing e uh, quadratic equations from solutions with this first problem. We know that 2 thirds and negative 5 is the solution, and this is how we did it. Just a little review. We, if x was 2 thirds, we wrote x equals 2 thirds. Then to get rid of the fractions, we multiply both sides by 3 to get 3x equals 2. And then we set that equal to 0 and used it for one of the factors. Here's the 3x minus 2. For x equals negative 5, we just added 5 to get one of the factors, and then we multiplied it out. All right, so we found an equation without any fractions where 2 thirds and negative 5 were solutions. Now let's see what happens if we use the formula we went over in the last video. All right, so the first way we did this that we just went over, um, we got this equation, 3x squared plus 13x minus 10 equals 0. Could we have gotten this equation if we had used this formula that we discovered in the last video? In other words, x squared minus the sum times x plus the product, would that give me an equation that is equivalent to this one up here? So it says, all right, x squared minus, now what's the sum? Well, you've got to add 2 thirds plus negative 5. So 2 thirds plus negative 5, uh, you've got to get a common denominator here, right? So that's going to be uh, 3. So I have, for the, my sum here, I'm going to have 2 plus negative 15. That's going to be negative 13 thirds. Okay, so I'm going to do x squared minus negative 13 thirds, there's your sum, right, times x plus the product. All right, what's the product? The product is 2 thirds times negative 5 over 1. That's a negative 10 thirds plus negative 10 thirds. Well, that doesn't look exactly like this, does it? Let's rewrite this. We have x squared plus 13 thirds x minus 10 thirds equals 0. Is this equivalent to this? Well, remember what we were doing when we were finding this original equation um, by doing, you know, the reverse factoring idea is we got rid of the fractions. So let's see what happens if we take this equation and we multiply by the least common denominator to get rid of its fractions. So least common denominator is 3. Oops. All right, so that gives us 3x squared. Let's see if we could do this in our head. 3 times 13 thirds means the 3 is going to cancel, plus 13x. 3 times negative 10 thirds minus, that's going to give 10 equals 0. Notice I did get the same equation. Now, which way was easier to do this? Probably the first way. <laughs> you wouldn't have to add two fractions together. So when you're dealing with, you know, integers, it's pretty easy doing it the first way. Or if you're doing it with fractions, it's okay. But it's when you have complex numbers that it gets a little cumbersome um, doing it the long way. So let's look at that example. In the previous video, we thought, well, how would we have found the equation, the quadratic equation, if we knew the solutions were 2 minus 3i and 2 plus 3i using the first way I showed you? You'd first write x equals 2 minus 3i or x equals 2 plus 3i. You'd set it equal to 0, and then you've got these big nasty fractions to multiply together. Oh, okay, how do you do that? Well, there's lots of ways that you can multiply x minus 2 plus 3i, but I like using a, a little box method, but you can use any method you want, but basically, I'll show you how I do it, because we have three terms. We've got an x minus 2 and a plus 3i, and we're multiplying by an x and not minus 2 and a negative 3i, and I'm just going to fill in x times x. We have all these multiplications to do minus 2x, this is going to minus 3xi, hmm, or a 3ix. 
This is a negative 2x. Um, and you know what? I'm going to put this x minus 2, 3i over on this side instead. Okay, and keep going. A little more room. Notice I get the same thing. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2, that's 4, right? Negative 3i times negative 2 is 6i. x times 3i is 3xi. or 3ix, depending how you want to write that. Um, negative 2 times 3i is negative 6i. And negative 3i times 3i is negative 9i squared. Let's write that over here. Negative 9i squared be negative 9 times negative 1, or plus 9. So I'm just going to write. That's going to be positive 9. Then we have to add all those like terms. <laughs> uh, so it's not an easy task here, but these are going to um, add up together to the same thing, right? Those are like terms. Um, let's pick another color. Oops. These two are like terms, but they're going to cancel out. One's a positive and one's a negative. And the same thing here, the negative 6i. I'm kind of writing those down so it's a little bit easier to see uh, that they're going to be going away. So, gosh, what am I what do I end up with here if I multiply all that together? I've got the x squared term, and I've got negative 4x. These four terms here all cancel out. 4 and 9 is 13. So when I multiply x minus 2 plus 3i times x minus 2 minus 3i, I get x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals 0, and that should be the correct answer. You could check it by actually just using the, um, the quadratic formula or completing the square and solve this and make sure you really do get 2 plus or minus 3i for its solutions. That's probably easier than plugging this in. Of course, you could plug it in. That's a big pain, right? Putting in 2 minus 3i, squaring it, etc., and getting 0 on both sides. So the question is, hmm, I wonder if there's an easier way to do this problem using the formula. So let's keep in mind when we had 2 minus 3i times 2 plus 3i, we got this equation, this quadratic equation, x squared minus 4x plus 13. All right, so we found this equation, x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals 0. I wonder if there was an easier way. What if we used the sum and the product? So we have two solutions, right? And it says the sum is what would go here, and the product would go here. What's the sum? In other words, what's 2 minus 3i plus 2 plus 3i? It's a plus sign, sorry. Well, that adds up to 4. That's easy. So the sum is 4. What's the product? What's 2 minus 3i times 2 plus 3i. Well, that's the difference of two squares. It's 4 minus 9i squared. Some of you probably remember it's just 2 squared plus 3 squared, but I'm showing all my steps here in case you forgot that. <gasps> 13. Awesome. So the product's 13. So according to this formula, I could simply write x squared minus, then I put the sum for the coefficient of x. So there's the my minus sign. The sum was 4, right? So minus 4x plus the product. There's the product, 13 equals 0. And that's how you can use the formula to get the answer for 2 minus 3i and 2 plus I, uh, 3i instead of going through all the steps we just did previously over here. So yes, you will get the same answer. It's just that your, comp your computations and your multiplication here, you're multiplying a trinomial times a trinomial. You don't have to use my little box method, but you still have to multiply all those terms out. That's nine multiplications and add like terms. You should still get the same answer. I prefer to use this formula, x squared minus 4x plus uh, I mean, x squared minus the sum of the solutions times x plus the product of the solutions equals 0 will also give you the correct formula. 
Don't forget if you get a fraction for one of these, you could just multiply both sides by the least common denominator and you'll get an equation without any fractions. Okay, we'll do some more problems on the next video. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.